Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our midweek Wednesday act of worship as we gather together as the people of God from St. Mary's and St. Leonard's and further afield, and we do welcome you. We continue this week to remember Christopher, remember John, and to remember Cecilia. Uh, my aunt's funeral was yesterday and it was good to just for a short time meet with family and just to pass on our, our love even though we couldn't physically cuddle and greet each other as we, we hoped. But we pray for Margaret, for, for John's wife. We pray for Michael and family the passing of Christopher. So let us pray as we begin our service, lighting our three candles for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We light a light in the name of the Father, who lit the world and breathed the breath of life into us. We will light a light in the name of the Son, who saved out the world and stretched out his hand in love to us. And we will light a light in the name of the Spirit, who encompasses the world and blesses our souls with yearning. We will light three lights for the trinity of love. God above us, God beside us, God beneath us. The beginning, the end, the everlasting one. Gather us in, the lost and the lonely, the broken and breaking, the tired and aching, the young and the old, the stranger and the friend. Forgive us and heal us, strengthen and renew us, for we are one family with Christ Jesus as our head. Our opening song calls us to think of the many different reasons that we have for blessing God. Ten thousand and probably more to come. Ten thousand reasons bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Thank you.
my time has come and still my soul will sing your praise thank you for all the different reasons we have. Forgive us for the times when we get so bogged down in the negative things that seem to wash over us and help us to hold on by faith to your eternal promises. Amen. All being well, uh, we'll be going to Jackie for our reading, uh, the reading that will be set for this Sunday coming. A reading from John chapter 1, beginning at verse 43. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree, before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. He then added, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father God, we thank you again for your word. By your spirit, teach us, guide us, encourage us this day. Amen. Nazareth. Can anything good come from Nazareth? It may have just been a joke, or it may have shown how people judge others from because of where they come from. We judge people very quickly. We make jokes about them before we even know them. Our prejudices are buried deep within us. And what comes out as an innocent joke and sometimes cut deeper than we realise. Can anything good come? And sometimes we are quick to judge. But sometimes we're also quick 
to judge ourselves, to undermine our own selves of who we are, of what we can do. If we were to lift up a mirror and look at ourselves in the mirror, some of us are guilty of saying, can anything good come from this person in front of me? We all have different fears. And one of those fears is the fear of what other people think of us and say of us. I know that it's not the fear of spiders that upsets me or the, or the fear of heights or that, but often the fear of what someone else might say of me can sometimes immobilize me from doing good doing the good that I've been called to do. Philip is called and his judgment is, can anything good come from Nazareth? But when he encounters Jesus, Jesus affirms him picks him up, doesn't run him down. He is a true as of old. Could we take that lesson today? Not to quickly judge, but to look to build one another up, to release each other from that fear of what might be said of us and be empowered to do good by encouraging one another. There's a challenge for us, a call to ministry. This week, our call to ministry on Sunday will be extended to, to Jackie. And this is a gospel reading that I believe the bishop chooses. Uh, and it'd be good to see what he makes of the passage. But it's our call too, that God sees us where we are, whether we're under a fig tree or locked away in our own houses. God sees us and God calls out to us to come and to serve in his name. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your love, for your affirmation, that you long to build us up. But sometimes, first of all, you've got to break us and mould us and renew us unravel us and put us back together. Lord, help us to know that you've called us to do good things. Forgive us for the times when we have thought wrong of someone, hastily said the wrong word, and maybe robbed them of a joy or the ability to go and do good. Lord, take away our fear, fear of doing good and being, Lord, criticised for doing something. Help us to build one another up. And Lord, we continue to pray for this world, the world that you love and that you gave your son for. Lord, we pray for nations of the world to work together at this time. Lord, for the outpouring of this vaccines, all these different vaccines to be available to everyone, regardless of where they come from, of who they are, for we are all brothers and sisters of humanity. So help us to love and care for one another. May the ways and the roads be open. That not just the rich countries would receive vaccines, 
every continent, every island, every person. Lord, watch over those with the responsibility for the production, for the for the delivery, for the storage, and for the administration. And with them we pray for our health workers, for those on our front line, placing themselves at risk. Lord, that they too would be able and strengthened to continue to care, to show goodness to those they've never met before. And may those who are suffering, Lord, know strength in the days to come. And Lord, for those whose time has come, Lord, for those who grieve, comfort them. Mm -hmm. May their loved ones be led gently from this world unto the next. We pray for all who grieve and mourn this day, that your comfort would be beside them. Release them from their fears. And restore all of us, Lord, to a time of true fellowship, of joining together with one another. Lord, we pray for our governments. We pray for the decisions that they need to make. And we pray for our people. That, Lord, that they would adhere to the best way forward. Lord, we pray for America at this time of unrest. Lord, we pray that you would bring peace again to that nation. That they would become again one nation. And be a light unto the world. And not a symbol of division and darkness. But a symbol of hope. Lord, may the light of justice shine again. May the light of hope burn bright in our lives. May the light of love guide us in all that we do and say. We pray too for your church, Lord. And for our own part within that great communion of saints. For the people of St. Leonard's and St. Mary's and our friends around us. Lord, encourage us and equip us as your church. Lord, we thank you for our buildings. We pray that you would keep them safe and in good order. But continue to remind us that the work that we do in your name isn't dependent on any one building, but is dependent on us doing good in your name. So empower us and strengthen us in this call to be your ministers in all the different ways. And we pray especially for Jackie, as she is set aside for the, the special ministry of being a priest in your church. Bless her at the beginning of this new ministry and bless the ministry team around us. For those who are involved in our pastoral work, for those in our house groups, our, our fellowship groups, our, even our book clubs and coffee mornings, may your blessings flow ten thousand more that we might be uplifted to continue to do good in your name. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with your love. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemy till all my fears are gone. 
So I'll go into this day knowing that you are affirmed as a child of God, called to do good works in his name. Go with the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. A closing hymn. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' righteousness. Seems to hide his face.
strong in the Savior's love. So goodbye. Uh, I hope you have uh, a, a good day and a good week to come, even though we're further more locked back down, uh, even by the cold and the, the winter. But keep warm, keep safe, and we'll see you again soon. Bye!